So I've pretty much wrapped up my most recent game, and originally I was planning on taking a break. But last night I cracked open a fresh Godot project, and I just couldn't help myself but tinker with my pipeline add-on. Many of you know I have some uh, gripes, let's say, with how Godot bakes navigation meshes. Uh, mostly it's just the tries, it creates a really skinny and all over the place, um, and it seems like maybe sometimes the engine struggles to figure out which path is best because those triangles are not optimized. Um, so in light of this, I finally brought some functionality into my Godot Blender pipeline add-on for navigation meshes. Stick around for the video and I'll show you my new and improved workflow along with a little demo in Godot. So from the standpoint of the add-on, uh, not too much has changed. What you have is you have an additional option here for nav mesh under uh, this path setting. So when you set a path, it's basically because the add-on wants to do something with a resource, you know, whether it's save a resource or load a resource or something like that. Uh, in this case, I wanna save this navigation mesh that, I that I'm showing here on the left. I wanna save this as a mesh uh, T-Res file. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna sample the points on this mesh in order to tell our AI where to go. Other things that are happening here in this little demo um, I've got a terrain with, you know, a grass uh, PBR material on it. I've got um, this water, this section of water here that uses a, a material that's loaded in from the add-on down here. You can see there's a static collision on the terrain and there's static collisions on each of these cylinders. So let's go ahead and export this. Basically what I have done here is I have my path already set up for my GLTF file. Basically you type in the file name you want, put .gltf at the end and hit export. Uh, the typical workflow I use is you're going to get this new GLTF file that's now exported from Blender. You're going to drag it into your scene. You're going to hit make local and remove the script. Uh, the reasons for making it local, it is annoying. I get questions about this all the time. Uh, it, it's like, you know, why can't I just leave it as an inherited scene so that every time I save Blender, I get updates? Well, it's problematic because the add-on wants to actually do things to the nodes in this scene. So it can only do that once you make it a unique uh, local kind of resource. Okay, so anyways, here we have our nav mesh. As you can see, it's come in here. And we have our static bodies are all generated. And we can see the water material automatically comes in. So that all happens just by virtue of having everything set up in the add-on. If I go ahead and run this, you'll see we have this character model down here. Uh, and it just wants to find the next path. So like I said, it's gonna find some vertex on this plane and it's gonna choose that as the next path. And you can see it's, uh, it's winding around pretty nicely here. Okay, so I won't keep this running any longer. We could watch this for days, but it's working well. The character motion is very smooth, very good. Um, and the path, the pathing looks fine. It looks like it's navigating around these collisions with no issues whatsoever. For the purpose of demonstration, I wanna show you what this workflow would look like if you were to use the nav mesh baking feature. Um, so let's go ahead and export this again. We're gonna drop it in our scene, make local, remove the script. And now we just have these two, you know, we have this plane that's kind of floating above the, the terrain. And this is what we're gonna use as our region. Uh, so the way you do this, is you create a new navigation region. We're gonna bring in the mesh. We're gonna bring in the four columns as well. So now that it has these, the mesh and the four columns, we can actually bake a navigation mesh here. Under geometry, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have both selected. So it's actually gonna use the box collision here, not just the mesh. And then we can go ahead and bake. So some issues here right away, and I haven't figured out how to fix this, but it's creating a surface on top of the cylinder. It's not really gonna cause a problem, but it doesn't really make sense. Um, you'll notice that if we play around with the cell size, if we increase this to even 0.5, let's say, it pretty much is totally broken. Um, there's a bunch of other settings here that you can mess with to try to get this to play nice, but basically it's very, very constrained in terms of what settings actually work. And what I really don't like are these areas here where these are really skinny tries, which is kind of what I mentioned at the beginning. Um, but there's some regions of this model where it's hardly even a convex shape anymore. Um, I, 
I probably won't be able to get it to do this test right now, but earlier I saw when the model tries to come over this ridge here, uh, it really can't navigate up and over um, this navigation edge and it gets really confused. But these calculations here are, they're going to be tricky for the engine to figure out how to navigate through these regions. So that's why I don't like the, the you know, in-engine baking feature. Obviously, you know, if you just want to do something quick and dirty, this will work, but what I've noticed is there's tons of people online on good old forums, Reddit, wherever, they're having trouble using navigation meshes and navigation agents. I wanted to use this example. Um, it's a bit more complex than the typical examples you see on YouTube where it's just a flat surface or maybe a ramp, right? I wanted to show what a real terrain with some features and some hills would actually look like. We can run it though and see, and see how it does. I think the model is able to do it, um, but it has even the up and down, like the vertical velocity is kind of all over the place. It doesn't really know what to do. Um, that height offset setting is going to be very important to get right. We got some bouncing there. So I don't want to go on this too far. On my most recent game, I tried doing this. I tried baking and the results were just not very consistent. Um, I don't know if we're going to see it right now, but sometimes you get bouncing back and forth between, oh, it's happening right now. Right? So this this <laughs> this is just not good. Let's do this. We'll do it from scratch. It really doesn't take that long. The general idea is you're going to have um, some base mesh that you're working with, and then you're going to want to go to face mode and then use the radius, uh, the circle selector, and just select all the faces you kind of roughly want that region to be in. Um, you'll notice that I've plopped my cylinders directly on each of these um, squares. That's that is deliberate. It helps the mesh um, bake out nicer. So all you do from here is you do shift D to duplicate P and then separate by selection. So I'm going to move this to my, to my nav mesh. So we're going to add a decimate. We're going to add a shrink wrap and then we're going to add a triangulate. First, let's get the shrink wrap set up. We'll do a tangent normal project here and then we'll do above surface and we'll set it to one meter, right? Um, make sure you use the eyedropper and then actually select your terrain. So of course, what's this going to do? It's going to offset your mesh by one meter from that surface. Now my character capsule is two meters high, so that'll work out basically perfectly to be in the middle of the, uh, the character's um, center. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to look at the decimate modifier. And if you scale this back, what you'll notice is if you take it too far, you're going to get the the nav mesh is now clipping through the terrain. So that's obviously no good. So basically you want to tweak this number until all of that clipping disappears. And once the clipping disappears, you know that you're kind of at your minimum amount of decimation that you can be at uh, to actually match the curvature of the terrain. If you want to see what it looks like first before applying though, you can go to viewport display and then just hit wireframe. And you can see there, here is our nicely triangulated mesh. So obviously one thing we haven't accounted for at this point is the actual static bodies. Uh, it's really not that hard to deal with. Basically, you hide all your modifiers. We're going to go into face select mode and just select those faces that those cylinders are on top of. We'll delete those out and then get your modifier, uh, modifier stack back in. So initially, when you see this, you might get some weird tries. But yeah, just try increasing that decimation until you get something that's really pretty. Um, and once again, I'm going for kind of like an aesthetic thing, but it is also an optimization, right? The more equal, the larger the triangles are, but you can still capture the curvature of the surface, the better it's, it's going to function. We can go ahead and convert this to a mesh. And here we go. So this is the nav mesh that we will be, we will be using. Um, you might want to cut out some of these points if, if you don't necessarily want those, you know, so at this point you can kind of clean up and manually tweak, uh, manually tweak this nav mesh as well. So that's why I like having that level of control. And from this point, basically you do the export as we saw before. One thing the export does do, I'll show you this. So if we delete this earth nav resource, when we export this, right? So this doesn't have, this has a collision on it currently, but if we clear that custom data and then we do set path, what's going to happen is that the add-on is going to save this mesh as a T-Res file, as a, as a resource basically. So we go ahead and hit export. We see it comes back in here and what we get 
is the level 01 GLTF. Once we drag it into the scene, that's the point at which it creates this nav mesh. So we go ahead and hit make local and then remove the, uh, remove the script. So the character logic is actually quite simple. I'll try to go over this quickly. But it has standard navigation agent uh, code. So there's nothing really fancy going on here. Basically, once the navigation finishes its current path, we're going to update the target. And updating the target is going to get a random point on the mesh and then update the navigation agent's target position to be that point. Uh, I'm also doing some stuff where I'm setting this debug position to be the target. That's that yellow sphere, just so we can see what's happening. Um, but otherwise, the real key thing here is we have this earth nav mesh that comes in and we can literally just drag this in right from the UI. Uh, it's going to give it that name from Blender, I think. So usually I like to just, you know, clean up this name or I'll type earth nav mesh, do something like that. Um, but that's how you get that earth nav mesh in here. Once it's in here, I have this little bit of code that creates a new MDT. And then we create from surface zero on this nav mesh. And then we get the vertex count. So when I call this get random point function, I have a, a random number generator set up here in this singleton. But basically we can get a random vertex more or less from that mesh. And when we go ahead to update the target, we're actually just gonna get a random point. So the algorithm is really simple. Um, you know, if the navigation agent is finished, then we update the target. We briefly set the velocity to zero just in case, you know, it doesn't find something so it actually stops the model. And then while it's uh, looking, or while it's not done navigating, then you just set the direction based on the uh, get next path position. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope it was helpful for those of you who wanna uh, download the add-on on Blender Market. Um, please just give it a rating if you like it and use it. I have gotten a lot of good feedback from people uh, who use it and have done some cool things with it. But yeah, if you can give it a rating, I'd really appreciate it. Um, but otherwise, just let me know in the comments if you have any questions. You can also reach out to me on Twitter if you have any issues, actual issues with the, the, the add-on. It's not working for you. You can DM me on Twitter. That always works. So thanks for watching and I hope to catch you next time.